When an earthquake hit, nuclear power plants are required to have an earthquake protection plan before the site even gets built. The force travels into the steel and rubber tubes at the bottom of the building. These tubes absorb the shock of the earthquake and allow the building to sway gently while the ground <laughs> shakes around it. All right, this is describing base isolation, which is real. Layers of rubber bearings, often with steel shims inside. They reduce the acceleration. They don't absorb all the energy like a sponge, though. It's redistribution and dissipation. And these are designed with stop limits to prevent them from sliding too much and swaying like you just saw. Other options include packs of giant springs or even metal plates that literally slide the skyscraper around. Friction pendulum bearings, laminated springs, and sliding isolation systems. They counteract the sway rather than decoupling it from the ground. But without these, the force would travel up the building's frame, cracking the walls while bending the steel beams. Yes, and the reason why you have these is so energy is dissipated by controlled plastic hinging at the bottom. Reactor buildings and nuclear facilities often use combinations of stiffness and redundant energy dissipation so that critical safety systems remain functional during an earthquake. And the reactor will automatically shut itself down and the safety systems will actuate. And they're robust in nuclear plants. They're designed to be coincident with tsunami and soil failure. And sending the skyscraper crumbling to the ground. Yeah, you don't want to see that at a nuclear plant.